These are the faces of those who have had their homes destroyed, family members killed, been abused and raped, and had all their rights stripped away from them. These are the Rohingya Muslims. Rohingya are a uh, indigenous ethnic group that's primarily Muslim, and they live in Rakhine State, which is uh, northern, northwestern Burma. And uh, this is a minority group that has been there for hundreds of years, but unfortunately there have been various times throughout the last few generations where they've been targeted by their neighbors or by the, the occupying powers. Since 1982, the religious and ethnic group has been persecuted against in their own country because the Myanmar government refused to see them as citizens. From Myanmar's 135th ethnic groups, only the Rohingya Muslims are denied citizenship. There are many reasons why the Rohingyas have been stripped of their rights. Some believe the Rohingyas are not true citizens of Burma and are actually descendants of Bangladesh and India. Others believe it's because they are Muslims in a dominantly Buddhist country, while some believe it's because the government wants their land. The cause of this genocide can be linked back to many reasons. Aung San Suu Kyi, the state councillor of Myanmar and a human rights activist, has denied any accusations against the massacre. The people of Burma and other world activists believe that Suu Kyi would be a game changer for the oppressed group. So the military government started to move aside uh, because of international pressure and Aung San Suu Kyi, a famous human rights icon, was elected in 2016, really came in, into power. Uh, but a power-sharing relationship with the military. And we thought she was going to be a champion for human rights, a champion for all minority groups. There are many minority groups in Burma, but she is now totally complicit with these terrible abuses that the military is, is, is perpetrating. They were stripped of the right to go to school, the right to marry, they have to get permission to marry, and most often permission isn't given to the Rohingya people. They, as I said, they cannot go to school, they cannot serve in the military, they can't run for political office. It's the same situation as the apartheid situation in South Africa, and the apartheid we had in this country, known as Jim Crow. Villages were burned and Rohingya were murdered. Uh, some Rohingya school children were murdered. Uh, there was a lot of hate and a lot of Rohingya were put into basically concentration camps. They're called IDP camps and they're still there. 120 something thousand uh, Rohingya are still there in Burma. They can't go out, they can't work. Um, but you know, it's not only those Rohingya that are stuck. Families have been killed and shot by the military, and some families have been broken up because of the vast destruction. The number of Rohingya Muslims killed and counted exceeds the government's official count of 400. 28,300 Rohingya children have lost at least one parent, while 7,700 children lost both parents. That makes the number of lost parents as high as 43,700. 144,000 are single mothers. This led to the 700,000 of the population to immigrate from Burma to neighboring countries such as Bangladesh, Malaysia, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, India, Thailand, and Indonesia. As of April 26, 693,000 crossed the border into a part of Bangladesh called Koks Bazar. Although being away from Myanmar's violent military and government is better, many of the refugees are still being raped and abused in the refugee camps. there is no definite solution for the problem just yet, many Western nations are trying to have more access to Burma and the Rohingyas, but it is very difficult due to the political corruption and military violence in Myanmar. However, there are organizations located in the UK and US such as the Burma Task Force, World Rohingya Organization, and Islamic Center of NYU that are using donations to get medicine, clothes, fresh water, and resources to the refugees. In addition to the donations and help from Western countries, Muslims and the youth around the world are using hashtags and social media to aware people of the horrific acts that are being committed against the Rohingyas. 
through the power of media, social media, young people can use their instruments, their media instruments, in, in a much more productive and powerful way by examining what's going on over there and, and taking action.